Lift off in five, four, three, two, one, zero. And lift off. We're here in Hawthorne, California at SpaceX's headquarters. This is a remarkable facility that includes everything from their mission control center to the design and manufacturing of their rockets and the focus of our tour today, the design and manufacturing of their Dragon spacecraft. We're excited to have SpaceX's innovative contributions as a part of the Commercial Crew program. Commercial Crew is focused on safely launching humans to and from the International Space Station with our two partners, SpaceX and Boeing. Hi, I'm Joshua Santora, and today we're gonna get an inside look at the development and construction of the Crew Dragon, also known as Dragon 2, which is SpaceX's crewed spacecraft. Let's head inside. We've made our way inside to the factory floor, and the first thing I can't emphasize enough is how massive and busy this facility is. We're here to talk about the Crew Dragon, but there's so much going on. There are areas dedicated to the Falcon boosters, which will launch the spacecraft, the Merlin engines, which will propel the first and second stages, the spacecraft itself, which we'll go look at in a minute, and a 3D printing lab that we're here in front of now. Through 3D printing or additive manufacturing, robust and high-performing rocket parts can be created and offer improvements over traditional manufacturing methods. SpaceX uses 3D printing for a variety of its rocket and spacecraft parts, including most notably the Super Draco engines. The Super Dracos function as an emergency abort system, and each Crew Dragon will be equipped with eight of them. Together, they can produce 120,000 pounds of axial thrust in under a second. That's enough force to transport the Crew Dragon almost 100 meters in two seconds and over half a kilometer in about five seconds. If an emergency situation was detected, even during liftoff or on the way to orbit, those Super Dracos are programmed to automatically fire, leaving behind the booster and transporting the crew and spacecraft to safety. At that point, parachutes deploy and it allows the crew to return gently to Earth. Now, let's go check and see what's happening underneath the Dragon spacecraft. Once the mission in space is complete, we need to get those astronauts home safely. The process of returning to Earth we call re-entry. For SpaceX, the final phase of re-entry is actually landing in the ocean with four main parachutes, much like the astronauts of the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs did. But before you can deploy parachutes, you've got to withstand the immense heat of passing through the Earth's atmosphere. The outside of the spacecraft will experience temperatures over 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. In order to protect their crews, SpaceX has developed a thermal protection system that they call Pika-X. It's a high-tech carbon material that covers the bottom of the spacecraft. They've been using it on their cargo dragons, like the one you see overhead, since 2010, and they'll be using that to bring the Crew Dragon home safely as well. This thermal protection system is designed to dissipate heat away from the spacecraft as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere with very little degradation. The original Pika material was first developed by NASA and has been adapted by SpaceX in partnership with NASA. It's so effective at protecting the spacecraft that each Crew Dragon will be able to be reused many times. This is gonna save on construction time and cost. When it comes time for launch, the folks here in Mission Control in Hawthorne have a critical role to play, even when launch is 2,500 miles away on the east coast of Florida. When it comes time for the Crew Dragon to launch, they'll be working together with teams from the Kennedy Space Center to ensure a safe and successful flight. Now, let's go check on the progress of constructing those Crew Dragons. From top to bottom, this spacecraft is being meticulously engineered and constructed. Everything from fuel to electronics, life support and communication systems are laid out and configured to maximize safety and mission success. It's also really technologically advanced, including the ability to autonomously fly and dock to the space station. Between the Dragon spacecraft and the Falcon booster, you'll find the trunk. The trunk is the location of the solar panels that are used to power the spacecraft while on orbit. The trunk would also stabilize the vehicle in the event an emergency abort is ever required. The Dragon development truly represents an intentional focus on iterative design and learning from past experiences. 
From conception phases, SpaceX has had human spaceflight in mind, even while they were just flying cargo. Their rockets and spacecraft have been designed to be human rated, and they continue to benefit from proven success as they look to the future. To end our tour today, I want to give you a taste of what it's like to be on board. You're getting a chance to feel what the astronauts will experience as they strap in and prepare to blast off into space. Alan Shepard unlocked a new frontier by being the first American to fly into space. Bob Crippen and John Young unlocked a 30-year legacy of living and working in space by being the first to fly aboard the space shuttle. And this? This is where we unlock the future of commercial spaceflight. We'll see you next time as we prepare to launch America. Hi, my name is Steve Stitch. I'm the Deputy Program Manager for the Commercial Crew Program. Thank you for taking our tour.